So the question is, is why do so many coders hate? And I do mean hate PHP. If you're thinking about learning PHP and you go out to Reddit or you go out to YouTube or you go to some other social media platform, you say, hey, I'm about to learn PHP. A lot of people are going to say, what's wrong with you? How stupid can you be? You need to learn Python or Java or C Sharp or something else. What you're going to find is a lot of coders out there are going to tell you it is utterly stupid to learn PHP and that you should better go off and learn a different language. So why is this? One of the main problems with PHP is that PHP is so easy, eh, more or less a secretary can use it. One of the things with PHP is, is it was designed to be incredibly easy to use. Again, PHP does all of that basic kind of like administrative tasks that lower level professionals may need to do. Things such as, again, collecting emails, doing email blasts, doing reports, all that kind of basic stuff. So when PHP was designed, it was designed so that people could write code very easily, even if that code didn't go by normal programming standards. So normally when you look at code for Java or C Sharp or these other programming languages, it looks all nice, it looks neat, it looks clean. Other coders can understand what's going on. Not only is it functional, but it's also readable as long as you understand how to read the code. One of the issues with PHP is you can make some ugly code. <laughs> you can make some truly horrible looking code. That works. <laughs> that work. It functions. To be clear, it functions. It does the task that you assigned it. But if you're somebody else trying to look at the code afterwards, it can be an utter nightmare to look at the code. One of the problems with it too is you'll hear a lot of uh, people co complain about security issues with PHP. One of the problems is that it's very easy to write insecure code in PHP, and it can be very difficult to audit that code, to take a look at it, to see exactly where it's, what's going on, to be able to see the security loopholes. So the thing with PHP is it's very easy to create something functional, but it's also very easy to create something functional that has a lot of problems that is very difficult for other people to go back and try to figure out what is going on. So that's one of the big problems that people have with PHP. HP is they just feel they just feel it creates uh, too many people that use it create bad code um, and then it's then that goes out in the world and it can create a lot of nightmares. Do you realize with a lot of coding projects, a lot of coding projects start as kind of like that little stupid side thing um, that you gave the intern and then somehow it's six years later and your entire enterprise runs off of it. Uh, you think about things such as asset tracking. So in larger organizations, larger corporations, uh, fixed asset tracking is a big deal. Making sure you know uh, all the computers that you have in your inventory, knowing when they were purchased, knowing the price they were purchased for, knowing the depreciation over time. And so you may have a company that was growing very quickly that did not have a good way of tracking their fixed assets. So you bring in a little help desk technician or you bring in an intern. The intern looks around and goes, oh, hey, you know what I can do? I can create a fixed asset database for our department. So let's say you're in the, uh, the desktop support. Um, department and so you think you know what I'm going to create a little inventory control system for us so we can track our hard drives and we can track our RAM we can track all of our all of the the components that we're using uh, to make life easier on us well the thing is imagine that little intern or that little desktop support uh, engineer who knows who knows how to swap hard drives doesn't really know how to code very well and they slap together this PHP code and it's some ugly PHP code. It's ugly PHP code, but you have a nice little form and you have a little barcode reader that's able to take information, dump it in the form, you hit submit, that dumps into the database, you're able to pull reports, and it actually works really well. And then it works so well, functionally for the desktop support department, then the, the IT director sees that and goes, oh, hey, you know, we should deploy that for the other, the other departments in IT. We should use that to do fixed asset for the server room and the data center. And so that, that, that code, that, that, that application that was created, now is not only collecting all the information for the desktop support department, which wasn't any big deal, now it's collecting all the information for the entire IT department. And then that's going along so well, the, the, the director of IT goes, huh, you know what? You know, we have to track desks, and we have to track chairs, and we have to track vehicles. We have all this other stuff to track. 
and this uh, this little web application that the intern created, you know, it's doing pretty well. So why don't we why don't we expand it more? And then every time it gets expanded, that little intern or that desktop support person, you know, adds a little module, adds a little thing in the ugly way that they add, and then all of a sudden that desktop support engineer actually feels like they can code pretty well. They get a job somewhere else, you know, for twice the pay. They go off to that other company for twice the pay. And then somebody within the company has to sit down. Uh, and at some point, the IT director goes, oh, okay, well, we want to add this additional functionality to this asset control system. And then you have somebody that sits down, they open up the code. And they just see just pages, just thousands of lines of just mess that they literally don't know what the hell to do with. Again, is this really a problem with PHP? Or is this more of a problem of making sure that people write code the appropriate way, that you have code auditing so that the rest of the organization knows what's going on with the code that's being deployed on a wide scale, so on and so forth. And so that's one of the big problems that you run into is that these small little projects that some little intern or desktop support engineer uh, create, they somehow start getting used corporate-wide, and then sometime in the future, five years in the future, some poor person has to go in and try to deal with that code in order to, to bring it up to the standards that they need. And so that's one of the reasons why people look down on PHP. Now, the important thing, too, is that people will also say that PHP is not the most functional language. If you're going to be learning a programming le language nowadays, uh, Python is the big one. Why, why learn PHP when you can learn Python? With this, that actually is a very true uh, argument, uh, depending on what you're going to be doing. So if you want to be a new coder, right? So if you want to go out there and you want to build applications, you're going to go out there, you're going to create your startup company, you're going to go out there and you are building applications, then learning a different uh, coding language, such as Python or one of the other languages, that may be a better way to go. By learning that one language, uh, you will be able to do more uh, once you've actually learned it. The, the, the converse side of this, the, the argument with it, though, is that if you're going to be something, somebody going out there and supporting technology, supporting code, the reality is, is that there is just a tremendous amount of PHP code already out there. If you go and you learn Python and you get to be an expert at Python, and then you go into an environment where they already have a lot of PHP code written, then you're going to have to go back and learn PHP code anyway to be able to understand what's happening and basically go in there and try to clean up whatever the hell that intern did five years ago. So that is an argument where if you're trying to create things with much more function, you're going to be creating uh, desktop applications, you're going to be creating uh, higher level applications, other programming languages are able to do things that PHP can't. But again, just realize that PHP has a specialization. Other programming languages have their specialization. And so, again, that gets to be a bit of a, you know, a squishy argument, right? If you're only going to be building new stuff, it may be better to use a different, pro uh, to learn a different programming language. But if you are going to be trying to maintain older things, learning PHP can be very valuable. So those are some of the arguments against PHP. They are, to be clear, they are real arguments. But with all of these things, you have to look at context. You have to look at situations. You have to look at why you're trying to do whatever it is that you're going to do and go from there. So that's why some coders hate PHP. Uh, they, they got a point. I mean, well, they, they got more than a couple of points. But I still think PHP is a valuable language. And the reality is, is that if you're going to be going out as an IT professional, you're going to be dealing with PHP at some point anyway. So you might as well learn it. Even if you learn it and then go off and do something cooler, just learn it. It'll do you good.